Rui, a 15-year-old boy who still does not have any magical abilities, is often the victim of bullying from his friend Elena. Elena is Rui's friend, who mocks him in every possible way due to the fact that he does not have any magical skills. On this day, Elena mocks Rui just as usual. In this world, almost everyone has at least some kind of unique magical power, while Rui did not have it, which greatly upset him. In addition, Rui had problems not only with magic, but also with sports, which only upset him even more. Unlike Rui, Elena learned to use magic at the age of three. As she grew older, Elena's magical skills increased. In addition, Rui was even more upset not only by Elena's superiority, but also by the fact that she would never be able to understand all his pain. Elena also trained Rui in magic, hoping that sooner or later, he would also be able to gain some kind of magical power. However, Rui was not very happy with the fact that it was Elena who trained him, which the girl did not enjoy. At one point, Rui simply cannot withstand all the pressure that constantly surrounds him. Then he tells Elena that today he wants to practice magic on his own. Elena was surprised by this decision, and she starts a row with Rui, in which she told him that people like him could never learn magic alone, thereby trying to provoke Rui into fighting her. At one point, Elena cannot stand it, and tells Rui that since he is unable to use even the simplest magic, then he is simply the same pathetic loser as his dead parents. These words deeply touched Rui's soul, since his parents died a long time ago, when Rui was still very young. Then Rui, not holding back all his anger at Elena, tells her that from now on he will no longer date her. Elena could not believe what she heard, which left her simply at a loss. Rui said that he did not even see Helen as a friend, as he was very annoyed by her arrogant behavior. With these words, Rui ran away from Elena towards the forest, while Elena herself could not believe all of the above. After such an unpleasant conversation, Rui was able to reach the forest after some time, where he decided to start training in magic. In preparation for using the spell, Rui attempts to use wind magic. However, Rui, as before, did not succeed, which made him extremely disappointed with himself. Rui was still haunted by what Elena said about his parents. A little later, Rui pulls himself together and continues to try to summon wind magic. After several attempts, Rui again began to think that, as usual, he was not succeeding. Rui also noticed that recently there has been a different atmosphere in the forest. Rui thinks that the atmosphere in the forest has become different because of the monsters that may live in this forest, and he decides to leave the forest as soon as possible. As Rui began to leave, he saw a very strange shining hole in the ground, from which came very strong magic that even he could feel. Rui decides to go back and tell everyone else about the pit, but due to carelessness he falls into this very pit. After falling, Rui briefly lost consciousness, and a few minutes later he wakes up and sees that he is in some strange place, in which at first glance, there was nothing. After Rui woke up, he began to remember everything that happened to him before he got here. While Rui was thinking, a beautiful and busty woman in a black revealing robe appeared behind him. Rui was very confused at the sight of the woman, because he had never met such beautiful women in his life. Taking a closer look, Rui notices small horns on the woman's head, believing her to be a demon. Rui read in a book that demons are extremely cruel and treacherous creatures that can control very powerful magic. The beautiful woman confirmed Rui's guesses, telling him that he immediately guessed that she was a demon. Out of confusion, Rui somewhat awkwardly introduced himself to the demon and said that this was the first time he had seen such a demon. The demon was very surprised by Rui's courage, despite the fact that in his village the elders told the children about demons that they are very dangerous for people. Despite this, Rui said that he was apparently not afraid of this demon due to the fact that she was very beautiful. These words made the demon very embarrassed, because for the last tens of thousands of years, no one had praised her for anything, especially for her beauty. Rui noticed how embarrassed the demon was, and he immediately began to ask her forgiveness for such unexpected words. After that, another girl appeared behind Rui, who was smaller and had tanned skin, and she also had a long, scaly tail and wings. Rui greeted the girl, which she did not like, but she was surprised by his courage. After this, the girl introduces herself as the seventh dragon queen. After hearing this, Rui was very worried, since dragons were considered the most powerful race in the world. The girl was pleased with the way she introduced herself to Rui, thereby greatly surprising him. After this, the girl asked Rui if he knew who this demon was. After hearing this, the demon remembers that she never introduced herself to Rui. The woman then introduced herself as Desterosa, the 66th demon queen who rules over all the darkness and chaos of this world. After this, Rui was extremely frightened and greatly amazed by what he heard at the same time. However, Rui never fully understood whether they could really be the Demon Queen and the Dragon Queen. Desterosa thought that Rui didn't see her as a Demon Queen just because he thought she was beautiful. 
while the Dragon Queen didn't understand how Desterosa was so easily embarrassed by his compliments. After that, they started having a small quarrel, looking at which Rui thought that they both got along well with each other and were probably even friends. During this quarrel, they both decide to reincarnate and show Rui their true appearance. During the transformation process, Desterosa's clothes were torn almost completely. Meanwhile, the Dragon Queen's outfit completely disappeared, and a hard scaly layer began to appear in some places. At this time, Rui felt an extremely powerful flow of magical energy that he had never felt before. After the reincarnation, the Dragon Queen turned into a huge and formidable dragon, and Desterasa acquired a new, even more revealing outfit than she had before. After that, Rui was completely convinced that there was a Demon Queen and a Dragon Queen in front of him. Rui remembered a legend in which a long time ago there lived a hero who had talents in magic, swordsmanship, and a good-natured character. One day, this hero rid the world of the Dragon Queen and the Demon Queen, thereby saving people from their atrocities, after which he himself disappeared. Then Rui realized that these were the same Dragon Queen and Demon Queen that this hero imprisoned here. However, Rui did not understand why they were not defeated, but only imprisoned here. He then assumed that the Dragon Queen and the Demon Queen were so strong that he could not completely defeat them, but only trapped them in this empty space. Then he thought that they might know how they could get out of here, and he decides to ask them about it. After asking Rui, Desterosa tells him that it is simply impossible to get out of here. Then Rui was in despair that he would spend the rest of his life here. The Dragon Queen only added that if they knew how to get out of here, they would no longer be here. After this, the Dragon Queen decides to show Rui her seal, which appeared on her when she ended up here. The Dragon Queen said that this seal was placed on them by the hero who left them here in captivity for many years. She also added that it was because of this seal that their souls are now closely connected with this place. Then Rui began to look for this seal on his body, and as it turned out, he did not have such a seal. Then, Desterosa began to undress Rui to try to find the seal of imprisonment on him. As it turned out, Rui really didn't have any seal, and no one knew why exactly he didn't have a seal. Then Rui said that he got here after he fell into some strange hole in the ground. Desterosa thought that he had ended up here due to some strange accident. Desterosa also suggested that he could still get out of here. Hearing this, Rui said that he was ready to do anything to leave this strange place. Hearing this, the Dragon Queen and Demon Queen were surprised by Rui's big promises. Rui, in turn, did not fully understand what exactly they wanted from him. Then, Desterosa said that Rui could make a hole in this place through which he could escape. Then Rui said that he could not use magic on his own, and thus he could not make a hole in this space. Desterosa told Rui that he couldn't not use magic at all. Then Desterosa invites Rui to train him in order to increase his magical powers. For better understanding, Desterosa explained to Rui that magic is like a muscle, and the more he uses it, the stronger it becomes. But despite this, if he overdoes his efforts, then his magic can completely run out, and then he can die from it. Desterosa also added that for the most effective training, he will have to bring his condition almost to death as often as possible. Desterosa said that 500 years of training would be enough for Rui, which greatly shocked him, thinking that he simply would not survive. Then the Dragon Queen told Rui that time moves differently here, and that here one year is equal to one day on Earth. Then if Rui spends 500 years in this space, then only 500 days will pass on Earth. The Dragon Queen said that if they trained him, he could get out of here. Rui thought that they would not help him just like that. And then they said that in return, he would help them get out, and he could not refuse such an outcome of events. The next day, Desterosa began training Rui, which he was very grateful for. Desterosa reminded Rui that it would take him 500 years to master all of his most powerful magic techniques. Rui wanted to know if time really moves in this place as the Dragon Queen said. Desterosa said that everything was so, and that once she herself checked it with the help of magic. Then Rui remembered the elder in the village who took care of him when his parents died. He thought that the elder there would worry about him, and that after all this training he would definitely return to him. He told Desterosa that he would try his best to get out of here as soon as possible. After saying this, she pats Rui on the head, thereby praising his efforts. Rui remembered how before his mother died, he also stroked his head, which made Rui feel a pleasant, warm feeling that he had not felt for a very long time. However, Desterosa asked for forgiveness if he did die here, which caused Rui's emotional mood to suddenly change to a more depressive one. During his training with Desterosa, Rui practiced his magical skills for a long time. From such training, Rui crawled to the Dragon Queen completely exhausted. The Dragon Queen realized from Rui's exhausted state that Desterosa was training him very well. Before Rui had time to regain his strength, the Dragon Queen was ready to train him. The Dragon Queen said that she would train Rui not in magic, but in a special Qigong technique. 
The Qigong technique was unique in that it fully revealed the full potential of any magician. There were very few people in the human world who used the Qigong technique, but this technique was not inferior to ordinary magic and power. The Dragon Queen told Rui that if he mastered this technique, he could easily defeat even a dragon. The study of Qigong technique is based on nine exercises, which are divided into attack and defense exercises. Any person who can learn all the exercises will be able to overcome any difficulties along the way. Rui didn't understand why no one used such powerful magic. The Dragon Queen explained that this technique is very difficult to master. She also explained that in recent years, it has become much easier for people to use magic, and that everyone can easily use basic magic, while the Qigong technique needs to be studied diligently for years. This didn't scare Rui much, since for him, training in the Qigong technique should be as difficult as training in ordinary magic. The Dragon Queen also added that to learn the Qigong technique, a person does not need any talent, and all training was based only on painstaking study. Rui said that he will try his best, and he can't wait to start training. However, the Dragon Queen did not mention that Rui must memorize everything he will study. After the explanation, Desterosa appeared to them and said that the training program would change every week. The Dragon Queen thought that Rui should learn Qigong before Desterosa had time to teach him how to use magic. Ten years after Rui ended up in the Endless Hell, his magic skills became much stronger. Desterosa was satisfied with the results of her training, but she also understood that Rui needed to continue training. Desterosa noticed all of Rui's progress and saw how he became a real magician. Desterosa was also surprised by how Rui, during all her continuous training, never showed his fatigue. At the end of the training, Desterosa told Rui that he had enough for today, but Rui argued that he could still continue, despite the almost complete lack of magical energy in him. Rui also said that he tried very hard in training, and that he cannot just take it and start resting. Desterosa thought that Rui had an unhealthy desire to master magical skills. Then she decides to tell him that he is trying very hard to prove himself in all her training sessions. She also added that despite how weak a magician he was in his world, all his efforts bring him results. After this, Desterosa decides to transfer some of her magical power to Rui through her magic channel. She explained to him that magicians like him have very little magical power, and therefore she could transfer very little magical energy to him. She also explained that if he did not use this magic, his magical power would weaken, and over time he would not be able to use his magic at all, which scared Rui very much. After this, Desterosa began the process of transferring magical energy to Rui. While she was transferring some of her magical energy to him, she noticed that during all the time of his training, Rui's magical channels had become more stretched compared to other people. After transferring the magical energy, Desterosa kept telling Rui that with every training he and his magic were becoming stronger. At first, such words from Desterosa touched Rui very much, since no one had previously praised him as much as now. A little later, he calmed down and told Desterosa that he was very pleased to hear such warm words of support. Rui also said that he was very glad that he came to this place and ended up with them affectionately calling Desterosa little sister. She was incredibly embarrassed by what Rui called her, causing her to faint. At first, Rui became very worried about Desterosa, but the Dragon Queen told him that she was just crazy and that she would come to her senses soon. After what she saw, the Dragon Queen told Rui to rest before training with her. During training, Rui was able to do 100 push-ups with a very heavy stone on his back. After this, the Dragon Queen told Rui to rest before the next exercise. She was pleasantly surprised at how the first visible results of her training began to appear. She also drew attention to how, after 10 years of training, Rui was able to master the Qigong technique. While she was thinking about Rui's abilities, she noticed how he, hiding from her, continued to do push-ups, which she did not like very much. She was very unhappy with this behavior, telling Rui that he should never overexert himself. Rui said that because he was extremely weak in his world, he should train as much as possible. The Dragon Queen kept telling him that this was all nonsense, and that his physique was more than strong and resilient, which Rui simply did not believe. He said that he was the weakest and slowest in his world, and that the Dragon Queen would not be able to understand him, because she was very strong. The Queen draconically realized that Rui was a child with complexes, and that she needed to somehow fix it. She then tells Rui that thanks to his efforts, his physique is getting stronger with every workout. She explained to him that he considered himself weak only because he simply did not know before how effectively he could use his body. She also drew his attention to the fact that his body has very efficient regeneration, and that he should be grateful to nature for the fact that he was born so strong. Rui was very touched by the Dragon Queen's words about his unique physique. After this, he decides to ask the Dragon Queen about what her parents were like. She replied that her parents died when she was very young, 
and that she did not even remember their faces. After this question, Rui began to feel somewhat awkward after his question, thinking that she was uncomfortable remembering it. But instead, the Dragon Queen just grinned and told Rui not to think about it, and that she also had a strong body, which she received after birth. After that, Rui could not contain his emotions and rushed into the arms of the Dragon Queen, thinking to himself that they had a lot in common. She didn't fully understand what exactly was going on, to which Rui replied that she was trying very hard too. After that, the Dragon Queen realized what exactly was going on, and after a short hug, she began to calm him down. After this, Rui felt better and said that at one time the Dragon Queen was the same as he was before, and that he would no longer whine. At this time, Desterosa had already managed to come to her senses, and she understood that everything had worked out for them with each other. In the hundredth year of his stay in the Endless Hell, Rui became much stronger, and he could even use some magical techniques. He wanted to show the Dragon Queen his results and he called her as Ryo. Then she remembered how Rui once asked her if she had a name. Before, when she terrified people, everyone knew her as the Dragon Queen, and no one saw her as an individual. And after hearing this, he decided to address her as Ryo. Rui distracted Ryo from his thoughts, and he wanted to know if his magic had gotten better. Ryo said that his magical skills have become much stronger compared to those he demonstrated in previous training. After this, Ryo began to praise Rui for being able to master half of all offensive and defensive Qigong techniques in just 100 years. Rui later told Ryo that every time she touches him, his heart starts beating faster every time. Ryo was shocked by what she heard, while Rui continued to say that her skin was very soft and that it smelled very good. Rui still couldn't stop complimenting Ryo, which made her feel more and more embarrassed. After that, she began to beat Rui for what he had just said to her, considering him a pervert. Rui didn't understand what exactly he said about her, thinking that he said too much. At this time, Ryo, while still thinking about what Rui had just said to her, was also thinking about how much he embarrassed her. At that moment, Desterosa approached them so that she could discuss some issues with Ryo regarding further training. Rui then decides to leave Desterosa with Ryo and continue training away from them. Desterosa pointed out to Ryo how they had become friends with each other during their training. She reminded Ryo of how before Rui was here, they would constantly fight each other to the death. Then they both realized how much had changed in the endless hell since Rui's appearance. Then Desterosa thought about how everything had become so fun for them from that moment on. After this, Rui decides to turn to Desterosa with a question about his magical abilities. However, instead of listening to Rui, she tells him not to call her by her name anymore. Rui then tries to remember how he should address Desterosa. And when he remembered, he addressed her as little sister, which almost made Desterosa faint. After that, Desterosa attacked Rui with open arms. After this, Rui and Desterosa begin training, in which Rui shows her his abilities in using his fire magic skills. Desterosa was very pleased with how after 100 years in endless hell, his skills had become so strong. However, despite such a rapid growth in abilities, their moment of separation is getting closer and closer. At this moment, Rui runs up to her so that he can find out if she is happy with his abilities. But when Rui ran up to Desterosa, he noticed that she began to cry. Rui was very upset because his little sister suddenly started crying. Desterasa, in turn, still crying, hugged Rui tightly to her, telling him that she was crying precisely because of him. Desterosa, not holding back her emotions, promised herself that she would definitely return him to her world, even if they never saw each other again. Over 300 years in endless hell, Rui was able to learn to use Dark Flame, one of the most complex and powerful spells. Desterosa and Rio were pleased that Rui was able to master magic that only high-ranking demons could use. Desterosa explained that she transferred some of her magical energy to Rui through magical channels from time to time so that he could use his magical skills more effectively. She was extremely pleased with how quickly Rui was able to master such complex spells. Rio said that Rui was also making great progress in her training and that he had mastered all the Qigong skills. After the training, Desterosa and Rio once again praised Rui for his efforts and determination. After training, Rui commented that it was already late and that it was time for them all to go to bed, which Desterosa and Rio agreed with. A second later, Rui fell to the ground from an unpleasant pain in the chest area, and Desterosa and Rio immediately tried to find out what happened to him. When they removed his outer clothing, they noticed a barely visible gray military mark on him. Rui was scared, while Desterosa and Rio were happy for him, because such a mark only appears on professional warriors. Then Rui calmed down and wanted to find out if Desterosa and Rio had similar marks. Desterosa then slightly removed some of her clothing so that Rui could see her mark. She said that it depicted a royal mark, which was higher in status than a military mark, 
and it showed that the owner of such a mark was worthy of the royal title. Rio also showed her mark on her palm, which signified her membership in the royal family. Then Rui decides to find out what exactly is written on his military mark. Desterosa and Rio read the contents of the mark, and it said that Rui is a warrior of demons and dragons. From what she heard, Desterosa was overjoyed and proud of Rui, and she immediately began to hug him tightly. However, Rio said that this mark is not finished and it needs to turn silver to be complete. Rui felt that in order to complete it, he had to train more and harder. However, Rio said that his current body has reached the limit of what it should be at his age. In the endless hell, no one ages, and therefore Rui's body does not grow, due to which he will not be able to overcome his threshold of the maximum power of his magical skills. And the only way to overcome this threshold is to get out of the endless hell. Desterosa tells Rui that his skills are now more than enough for him to escape the endless hell. Then Rui decides to rest today, and tomorrow he will try to get out. A little later, Rui returns to the small house in which he lived to rest and gains strength throughout all these 300 years of training. In a dream, Rui accidentally grabs something very large, soft and pleasant to the touch. When he woke up, he saw Desterosa in front of him in her underwear, whom he had been holding by the chest all this time. Desterosa was pleasantly surprised that Rui immediately decided to grab onto her. This sight frightened Rui very much, and he did not understand what was happening now. After that, Rio, who was also in her underwear, attacked Rui. Rui was still confused by the appearance of Desterosa and Rio, and still did not understand what exactly they wanted to do with him. Desterosa then explained to him that since he would be leaving them tomorrow, he and Rio had to say goodbye somehow. Rio said that their power and knowledge is not all they can give to Rui. Then they told Rui that they could also give him his first time. After that, Desterosa immediately kissed Rui, which made him very excited. After the kiss, Desterosa couldn't stop telling Rui how much she loved him. After Desterosa, Rio also began to kiss Rui, thereby showing all her affection for him. After the kiss, Desterosa noticed how embarrassed Rio was, which she in turn denied. After this, another quarrel began between Desterosa and Rio, in which they began to make excuses for the fact that this was happening to them for the first time. Rui could only silently watch their quarrel from the sidelines. After that, Desterosa stopped quarreling, and they were both ready to attack the defenseless Rui. Rui was very confused and frightened by the situation in which he unwittingly found himself. However, Desterosa and Rio could no longer be stopped, and they were ready to continue their pleasures with Arui. The next day, Desterosa and Rio explained to Rai what he needed to get out of the endless hell. Rui just looked at Desterosa and Rio and thought about the day he ended up here. He could not forget those very first training sessions, which tortured him half to death. He couldn't forget those moments with Desterosa and Rio when he had so much fun with them. Rui understood that these days of his life had come to an end, and that today he would return home. After this, Rui began to prepare one of his spells, which would create a hole in space through which he would return home. Before Rui creates the portal, Rio interrupts his spell to give him something important. Rio gives Rui his dragon fang earring so that he can use it to create a hole in space. Rio tells Rui to take her earring and channel all his magical power into her. Ryu took Rio's earring, directed his magical power into it, and instead of the earring, he ended up with a dragon sword in his hands. Rui was surprised by how strong the magical power was coming from his sword. Rio informed Rui that this was not an ordinary sword, but a relic of his father, which was made from his fangs. She also added that there are only two such swords in the entire world, and she gives one such sword to Rui as a memory of them. Rui wanted to say that he cannot accept such a gift from Rio, but she does not listen and interrupts him. Rio continued to say that she was giving this relic to him for a reason, and that he should fully understand this if he did not want to accept it. Rui then changes his mind and decides to accept the sword, promising Rio that he will treasure it. Rio was happy with Rui's decision, after which she explains to him how to properly use this sword. A few minutes later, Rui was ready to use the sword to cut the space between the human world and the endless hell. Rui began to concentrate all his magical power on the sword, after which he makes a strong and confident swing. After his impact, a large crack appeared in the air, from which a bright light came. While the crack was growing and getting larger, Rui had already begun to say goodbye to Desterosa and Rio, not holding back his emotions. Before Rui leaves them, the three of them begin to hug each other. Desterosa wished Rui a good journey and to be careful when returning to his world. Rio wished Rui good luck and told him that they would always wait for his return. Ryu could not believe that this was the end, and that after passing through the crack, he would finally find himself in his world. He also thought that he would definitely free them from endless hell in order to continue living with them. Before returning to his world, he told Desterosa and Rio that he would definitely free them from here. 
Desterosa and Rio just looked after Rui, who was already leaving them. A second later, Rui walked through the crack, after which it closed, letting Desterosa know that Rui had left them. Rio told Desterosa that they were now alone in an endless hell for the first time in 300 years. Then Desterosa grabbed Rio and began to cry loudly, which Rio did not expect from her at all. Desterosa couldn't stop talking about how much she was already jumping around the Rui. Rio then began to try to calm her down, thinking to herself that she had never done this before. Rio never ceased to be amazed that the Demon Queen was capable of such emotions. When Desterosa calmed down a little, she decided to ask Rio if she missed Rui. Rio said that she believes in Rui and that she doesn't feel as lonely as she did before they had Rui. After what Rio said, Desterosa's emotions got the better of her again, and then she began to squeeze Rio, calling her cutie. Then Desterosa told Rio that if she felt lonely, then they urgently needed to hug. After that, Desterosa began to tightly hug Rio, who tried to fight her off in every possible way. Rio increasingly wanted Rui to return to them as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Rui was between dimensions through which he must get to his world. Rui also really missed Desterosa and Rio, whom he won't be seeing for a while. However, he pulls himself together and thinks that he will definitely save them. A little later, he finds another crack that should move Rui to his world. Then Rui takes out his sword, which Rio gave him, and hits the crack with it to make it bigger. When he widened the crack and went through it, he found himself in the same forest in which he found a hole in the ground through which he fell into an endless hell. It was only seconds later that Rui finally realized that he was finally home. Rui's happiness simply knew no bounds, and he decided not to hesitate and return to his native village. However, during his stay in endless hell, he managed to forget the way home. At first, Rui wanted to get onto the tree and look around. But as soon as Rui jumped, he found himself at a very high altitude. From such a height, Rui was able to look around and see the sea and his native village nearby. As soon as Rui saw all this beauty, he realized what a small world he had lived in before. At first, Rui thought about how he could save Desterosa and Rio, but he was not entirely sure that he would succeed. Then Rui plans to return to his home first, to be sure that nothing has changed there since his disappearance. After arriving home, Rui packed some things and was going to go to a very important place for him. This place turned out to be a large stone, on the site of which Ruya's mother and father were buried. Rui apologized for his absence for so long and said that next time he would introduce Desterosa and Rio to them. At that moment, an elder appeared behind Rui, who raised Rui and looked after him after the death of his parents. The elders wanted to know from Rui where he had been all this time, to which Rui said that it was too long a story. Rui apologized to the elder for being gone for so long, and he was very happy to see the elder. Then the elder invites Rui to go to him to give him something warm. Rui created a large fireball and told the elder that he must go. The elder was shocked that Rui could create such a fireball so easily. Rui said that he is fine and that he is not as weak as before. The elder saw unprecedented confidence in his abilities in Rui's eyes, and he also said that he would look after Rui's house. Rui thanked the elder for his concern, after which he went on about his business. While Rui was walking, Elena noticed him and immediately began telling Rui about how angry she was with him. Elena thought that since Rui had returned, he wanted to make peace with her. Rui told Elena that her arrogance had not changed at all during the time he was gone and that she should finally grow up. Elena was in deep shock from what Rui told her, since before his disappearance he had not behaved so boldly with her. Elena, in a fit of rage, immediately decided that Rui should answer for his words and she was already preparing to strike Rui. However, contrary to all Elena's expectations, Rui manages to repel her attack without receiving a scratch. Elena was perplexed by how Rui was able to stop one of her most powerful moves. Rui told Elena that she couldn't see anyone around her, and that she couldn't see how people around her were getting stronger while her skills remained the same. Then Elena only gets angrier, and she again tries to inflict at least some damage on Rui. However, despite her fast attacks, Ryu still manages to dodge each of her blows. After this, Rui decides to use one of the techniques of the Qigong technique, during which he delivers a powerful kick to Elena right in the face. After such a strong blow, Elena fell to the ground, but even after it she did not stop commanding Rui, telling him to pick her up. Instead, Rui just says goodbye to Elena, telling her not to get in other people's way anymore. Elena still did not stop shouting after Rui that sooner or later she would still be with him. On the way, Ru remembers a conversation with Desterosa and Rio, in which they discussed a plan on how Rui could rescue them from the endless hell. Desterosa suggested that the first thing to do would be to find some information about the hero who imprisoned them, since only he knows how to remove the seals from them. Rui suggested that this hero must have already died, but Rio said that his relatives or his family might also know how to free them from here. Then Rui decides that when he returns home, 
he will have to find the hero's grandchildren. Along the way, Rui decides to first find out about the hero's grandchildren from people in Escadoria, the capital of the continent. However, Rui did not know which direction the capital was located, and he decided to find a large accumulation of magic. The technique of searching for magic is more often used by demons, while people need to have a lot of magical energy to master this technique. Rui then concentrates all his power on using this magic to find large concentrations of magic that may be coming from the capital. After using it, Rui finds a large accumulation of magic, thinking that the capital is located in that direction. After Rui discovered the approximate location of the capital, he decides to use Flying Jump, one of the Qigong techniques that allows him to develop very high speed. Rui only jumped forward slightly, and he was already able to cover a very long distance in a matter of seconds. After several such intense jumps, Rui decided to take a short break. But when Rui stopped, he noticed a large line in front of him, which was moving towards the entrance to the capital. Rui was a little worried because he had never been to the capital before, and he didn't know what to expect. Finally, it was Rui's turn, and one knight demanded that Rui show his migration card. The knight realized that Rui did not have any migration card, and he demanded that Rui leave the queue. Rui was confused because no one had told him before that he should have some kind of migration card. Rui began to worry more and more every second, while trying to somehow get out of the situation. The knight believed that Rui was going to enter the Magic Academy, but Rui did not fully understand what the knight was telling him. Then the knight told Rui to hurry up, since the entrance exam to the academy would begin very soon. Then the knight let Rui into the capital and wished him good luck in his exams. Rui was happy, and at the same time he also did not understand why that knight still let him through. Rui was in the capital for the first time in his life, and he was simply amazed at how beautiful everything was in it. Rui heard from adults that there were a lot of people living in the capital, but there were many more of them than he thought. Rui went to one of the signs so that he could familiarize himself with some of the capital's places. To the right of the sign, Rui saw a shopping area where people were selling various things in the morning. To the left was the very academy that the knight had told him about. Rui always dreamed of getting into this academy and studying there, but now he had no time for that. At first, Rui wanted to find out something about the hero's relatives in the bar, because you can always find various useful information there. But since he was still a child, he would have been quickly kicked out of there. Then, Rui thinks of going to the guild, where he can get the opportunity to earn money by completing various orders, and he can also get a migration card with which he can travel to other cities and countries. After some deliberation, Rui decides to join the guild and become an adventurer. Then, an old angry woman appeared near Rui, who believed that Rui had gotten lost on the way to the academy. Then the woman grabbed Rui and forcefully dragged him towards the academy. On the way, the woman told Rui that the academy was made to directly compete with the Empire, which was becoming larger and larger every year. She also told Rui that he would have no problem passing the exam at the academy without presenting any documents. A few minutes later, they reached the very academy where entrance exams are now being held. Rui already understood that he was now in a hopeless situation, and now he had no choice but to go to the exam. On the other hand, Rui was not at all upset that he was able to get here. After that, Rui walked up to the counter, behind which was one of the teachers who was receiving new students. In the distance, Rui noticed targets floating in the air, where new students showed off their magic skills. One of the teachers told Rui that he needed to show his magical skills, where he could use absolutely any magic. Rui noticed that one girl was completely unable to hit targets with her magical abilities. Rui felt sincerely sorry for her, while the rest of the applicants laughed at her and said that she was completely inept. The next one to show off his magical skills was Rui. At first, Rui wasn't going to show his full power, but he decided to show everyone what he learned from Desterosa and Rio. At this time, the others did not understand who it was and from which village he came here. The teacher gives Rui the command to start, and Rui created a huge fireball that should destroy all the targets at once. The others were shocked by what they saw and did not understand how Rui was able to use such powerful magic. After Rui used the magic, a large gap appeared on the ground, from which a lot of smoke came out. While the others were scared by such magic, Rui was more than pleased with his result. Rui decides to ask the teacher if he managed it, but the teacher at that moment was lying on the ground unconscious. Then Rui decides to ask another teacher if he will be accepted with such skills, to which the teacher fearfully replied that he might be accepted, after which Rui was sent to the next exam. Rui was very embarrassed by the interest with which people around him were talking about him. At that moment, Yuri, one of those who also decided to enter the academy, decided to turn to Rui. Rui didn't understand what a handsome guy like Yuri wanted to know from a country boy like him. Rui greeted Yuri and said that he was very glad to meet them, to which Yuri reciprocated. After meeting each other, 
Yuri decides to immediately start communicating with Arui on Tai, since everyone here was absolutely the same. Rui was very surprised by Yuri's expressive smile, thinking to himself that girls were constantly running after Yuri. Yuri drew Rui's attention to how many unusual new students were entering the academy this year. Yuri also told Rui that he thought she would be the best among the new students, although Rui did not quite understand who Yuri was talking about. Rui decides to ask Yuri who exactly he is talking about, telling him that he only recently entered the academy. At first, Yuri thought a little, but a little later he and Rui returned to the topic of conversation. Rui wants to know from Yuri how strong she is, to which Yuri replies that she is the granddaughter of that same hero. Rui was shocked by what he heard, since he did not at all expect that the granddaughter of the hero himself would study here. Then Rui decides to ask Yuri what she looks like, which at first surprised him very much. Almost immediately, the hero's granddaughter happened to be near Rui and Yuri. As soon as she appeared, she immediately asked Rui if he was the same new student that everyone was talking about now. When Rui told the hero's granddaughter that it was him, she told him that he looked extremely pathetic. Then Yuri decides to intervene in the matter, telling her that she has no need to insult Rui. After this, Yuri introduces Rui to Charlotte Eudelia, the granddaughter of the legendary hero. Rui immediately recalls moments in his life when he admired the hero and his actions. He also thought that the Queen of Demons and the Queen of Dragons were not at all as evil as they were described in legends, but very kind creatures. Eudelia interrupted Rui's thoughts and told him that she would not let some boy just take her place at the academy. Then Yuri tells Eudelia that all the exams are already over and that there is no way to change the situation. Then Eudelia puts her hand into her chest and pulls out a white glove. After she takes out the glove, she throws the glove towards Rui and challenges him to a duel. Everyone around was in unprecedented shock that the granddaughter of the legendary hero was challenging a simple village boy. Eudelia tells Rui that if she defeats him, he will refuse to continue entering the academy. If Rui still manages to defeat Eudelia, then she will become his personal slave. Yuri tried with all his might to dissuade Rui from accepting the challenge because it would be a completely irrational decision. On the one hand, Rui thought that he did not need a slave at all. But on the other hand, he had the opportunity to learn something about the hero from Eudelia. Despite persuasion from others, Yuri Rui raises his glove and thereby accepts Eudelia's challenge to participate in a duel. A few minutes later, Rui and Eudelia were ready to begin the battle, while the rest of the students watched the whole thing. Regus, one of the teachers at the academy, was very worried about the duel, because if there were casualties among the students, he could suffer heavy punishment. Then Yuri reassured the teacher, telling him that he took full responsibility upon himself, because he knew that deep down, the teacher also wanted to know what Rui was like. However, Yuri said that the teacher should also judge everything, which at first did not suit him very much. After this, Regus comes out and dictates the rules of the duel, in which the winner will be the one whose opponent loses consciousness or surrenders on his own. The teacher also added that he could end the fight himself if he considered that one of the opponents was no longer able to continue the battle. Regus also reminded the duel participants that killing during battle is prohibited, after which Regus announced the start of the duel. Eudelia thought that if Rui surrendered as quickly as possible, the duel would end quickly. After the announcement of the start of the duel, Eudelia took out her sword, with which she was going to defeat Rui. At first, Rui was also going to get his sword, which Ryo left for him. But he remembered her words that Rui should only use his sword when there is a real threat to his life. Then Rui changes his mind about using a dragon sword in the duel, and he decided to fight the duel with his bare hands, which surprised Eudelia at first. Eudelia was already ready to strike Rui the first blow, while not forgetting to remind herself once again that she is the granddaughter of the legendary hero. After this, Eudelia ran with all her anger towards the unarmed Rui. Then Rui puts his hand forward and uses the Qigong technique, Golden Cocoon, which completely absorbed all the damage from Eudelia's blow. Eudelia was shocked by how Rui was able to deflect the blow of her sword, which can easily cut through steel. After fending off the blow, Rui says that he is neither the Demon King, nor the Dragon King, nor a hero, nor even the grandson of a hero, but that he is just an ordinary village boy. Eudelia was still shocked by how easily Rui could fend off her attack with his bare hands. The Golden Cocoon technique makes only a certain area of the wizard harder and more durable, while the Steel Cocoon technique made the entire body of the wizard hard. But at the same time, his defense was less strong than that of the Golden Cocoon. Also, the Golden Cocoon did not in any way impede the free movement of the protected limb, which made it very effective. Eudelia again tried to inflict at least some damage on Rui, but he was able to easily repel this attack. Eudelia did not understand how Rui could so easily fend off her blows, 
because she masterfully wielded a sword. Then she decides to change her strategy to use many pedal blades instead of a sword, which flew towards Rui. But despite the speed and number of these blades, Rui was able to dodge each blade without any difficulty. Then Udenlia decides to use a myriad of these blades so that they will surely hit Rui and neutralize him. The teacher thought that this was too much, and he decided to interrupt the duel. But Yuri decided to stop the teacher. Yuri drew the teacher's attention to how confident and calm Rui was behaving, which could mean that he could easily cope. Rui was surprised by how many petals were flying towards him, and he felt that he needed to use very strong magic here. Then Rui decides not to run away from the petals, but on the contrary, to run towards these petals. Then Rui makes a high jump and uses the magic technique of a wide flame, which burned all the petals flying towards him. Eudelia was in unimaginable shock at how Rui could so easily repel attacks from both sword and magic. Then Eudelia was overtaken by memories from her childhood, when she trained long and hard with her father. Her father told her about the hero's mark that no one had been able to obtain, and he told her that if she trained long and hard, sooner or later she would receive such a mark, which in turn motivated her greatly. After that, a crowd of adults appeared next to her, who were touched by her in every possible way and said that she would definitely become a hero like her grandfather. Eudelia promised that she would train all the time, and that when she grew up, she would become a real hero who would protect civilians from various threats. Having collected her thoughts, Eudelia was again about to strike Rui again. Moments before the impact, Eudelia was determined to prevent Rui from taking her place at the academy. At the moment of impact, Rui again uses the Golden Cocoon Qigong technique to once again repel the entire attack. Then Rui remembered those very moments from his life when Elena mocked him in every possible way, who believed that he had absolutely no talent in mastering magic. At this moment, Rui thought that Eudelia had also had a very hard time before, and that she had devoted all her time to training to become one of the best. Then Rui decides to use another technique of the Qigong Golden Sword Grip technique, with the help of which he not only stops Eudelia's next attack, but also grabs the sword in his palm. Eudelia was very frightened by how Rui was able to grab her weapon so easily with his bare hands. After grabbing the sword, Rui prepared to use the next Meteor Fist Qigong technique, which greatly increased the power of his fist attacks. Eudelia considered that these were her last seconds of life, and that she was unable to defeat Rui. However, Rui's fist manages to stop his fist a couple of inches from Eudelia's face, from which she is not harmed. Rui decided to convince Eudelia that the duel had ended in his favor, and that they no longer needed to continue the battle. Then Eudelia was very frightened, and she began to cry, while not understanding how Rui could defeat her so easily. Rui was very frightened by Eudelia's state in which she was now. Then Rui noticed that no one was on them now, and then he decided to create a small dark space in which no one could notice them both. Then, a large black cube appeared in front of the rest of those present, through which Rui and Eudelia were not visible. After this, Rui decides to check on Eudelia's condition and try to calm her down. A little later, Eudelia noticed that everything around had disappeared, and that she and Rui found themselves completely alone in a dark room. Rui explained to Eudelia that he created a special cube that blocked all extraneous light and extraneous sounds so that no one would see Eudelia in this form. After this, Rui immediately began to dry Eudelia, who was very frightened. Eudelia was both frightened and surprised by such concern for her, which made her very embarrassed. Eudelia decided to ask Rui why he was doing all this, despite how rudely she spoke to him. Rui just said that if someone gets into some kind of trouble, then he just goes and helps the person. Hearing this, Eudelia remembered how when she was little, she also dreamed of helping people in trouble. Eudelia thought about how she had never understood such a simple truth before. After this, she apologizes to Rui for her behavior and accepts her defeat. She also admitted that Rui is much stronger than her not only in battle and magic, but also in her soul. Rui said that Eudelia also showed her fighting skills well, and that her latest magic especially surprised him. Rui was about to remove the black cube, but Eudelia said that friends address each other as you, and that they are now friends. Rui did not object to this and they shook hands as the black cube began to collapse. Viewers finally saw Rui and Eudelia finally escape from the large cube. After this, Eudelia told all the spectators that she was giving up and that she fully accepted Rui's victory. Everyone was shocked by such a statement from the granddaughter of the legendary hero, and Eudelia said that Rui should study at the academy instead of her. Teacher Regas only reminded Eudelia of the promise that she must fulfill if she loses. Rui remembered Eudelia's promise to become his slave, but he said that he did not need a slave at all. Eudelia said that she would not accept the fact that Rui refused to comply with all conditions and that she was ready to become his slave. Then Eudelia began to insist that if she lost, 
then she must become Rui's personal slave. After that, she grabbed Rui's hand and created a slave mark on her hand, with which Eudelia must now do whatever Rui wants her to do. Eudelia was not upset, but on the contrary, she was ready to follow all of Rui's instructions. Rui was only once again embarrassed by the fact that the granddaughter of the legendary hero had become his personal slave. After the duel, Rui and Eudelia met Yuri at the academy, who wanted to ask them about the results of their exams. Yuri said that he could not imagine before that someone from the hero's family would become someone's slave, which greatly confused and angered Eudelia. Yuri also wanted to find out from them who they are to each other now. Eudelia only said that she did not tell Rui because she believes that if she had told him earlier that she wanted to be friends with him, he would have tried to stay away from her. Rui did not understand anything, and then Yuri decides to introduce himself to Rui as Yuri von Exodoria, who was the current prince of Escador. Rui was shocked by what he heard, since he could not even imagine that he would personally know anyone from the royal family. Then Rui decides to address Yuri as master, to which Yuri himself said that friends should not call each other master. After this, Yuri asked Rui if he had a place to stay for the night, since from his appearance it was clear that he was not from the capital. Rui said that he did not think about it at all, because he expected to resolve such issues as they appeared. Yuri said that he would try to somehow resolve the issue of Rui's place of residence. Yuri said that Rui could spend the night with him, and that he would be well taken care of there, and therefore Rui would not have to think about paying. Then Eudelia considered Yuri's generosity too suspicious, assuming that he had some reason for this. Yuri said that now there is a large shortage of population in the capital, and if thanks to students like Rui, the academy's rating increases, then students from other countries will go to the capital. Yuri also added that if Rui studies at the academy, then Yuri will support Rui in everything. Rui thought that if Yuri helped him, it would be much easier for him to get used to it, and then it would be easier for him to find the necessary information about the hero. And after such thoughts, he decides to become a student at the academy. That night, Rui spent the night in Yuri's room, and the next day he was going to look for information about the hero. As soon as Rui went outside, he saw Eudelia near the entrance, who had been waiting all morning for him to come out. Rui didn't expect to see Eudelia, and she said that she just wanted to come to Rui, so that Eudelia would not think that something was wrong. He told her that he was very glad to see her, after which her offense changed to joy. After this, Eudelia invites Rui to take a walk with her, while she shows him various places. Then Rui and Eudelia walked around the capital all day, visiting various places. During the walk, Rui thought that he was now in great debt to Eudelia, and that he now wanted to free Destarossa and Rio, thereby devaluing everything that the legendary hero had done for this world. Then Rui remembered his last night with Destarossa and Rio, when he all discussed together that the hero might still be alive now. Destarossa said that since the hero was able to create a place where no one ages like the infinite, then it was quite possible for him to find a way to become virtually immortal. Then Rui said that since he locked Destarossa and Rio here, he is bad, and when he finds the hero, he will finish him off. Then Rio said that there was no way for them to kill the hero, since he was too strong for anyone to defeat. Destarossa felt that the hero couldn't just attack and imprison him and Rio here, and he probably must have some compelling reasons for this. These words did not convince Rui in any way, and he still wanted to finish off the hero, since he could not just forgive him for being here. Eudelia noticed that something was wrong with Rui, to which he replied that he was fine. Then Rui came to his senses, and he decides to find out something from Eudelia about the legendary hero, and she thought that Rui was one of her grandfather's regular fans. Eudelia said that she doesn't know very much about her grandfather, since 300 years have passed since he disappeared. Then Eudelia tells Rui that despite this, she has several family items, among which were also her grandfather's things, which Rui was very interested in. One of these items was the sword Frau Gerasos, which was used by Eudelia in a duel with Rui, and which was passed down in the hero's family from generation to generation. Rui began to look at the sword, and could not take his eyes off it, because while he was looking at the sword, for some reason he simply felt good in his soul. When Eudelia handed the sword into Rui's hands, the sword began to emit unusual energy, and Rui thought that the sword was filling Rui with unusual magical power. After a few seconds, Rui returned the sword back to Eudelia, after which he felt some unusual sensation from the sword. It was getting close tonight, and Rui told Eudelia that it was too late to go out and that they should both go home. At first, Rui wanted to accompany Eudelia home, but she invited him to spend the night with her, finding themselves alone with each other. Rui thanks Eudelia for such a wonderful day in order to somehow dilute the suddenly appeared situation. Eudelia supported Rui and said that she would like to spend the day together sometime. 
At the same time, Eudelia thought that she had a unique opportunity to make Rui her. Eudelia remembered how many guys from her circle began to confess their feelings to her when they found out that she was the granddaughter of the legendary hero. Despite mutual interest in boys, Eudelia did not date these boys, since they were much weaker than her. During all this time, Rui was the only one who was finally able to surpass her. Unexpectedly for Rui, Eudelia reminded him that she was his slave. Then Eudelia said that she could do for him whatever he wanted without any exceptions. After that, Eudelia took Rui's hand and put it to her chest. Rui thought back to that very last night when Desterosa told him that even though he loved them, he shouldn't burden his fate. Desterosa told Rui that she and Rio loved him very much, but they would both be very happy if he found someone to love for the rest of his life. Rio said that among all races, only humans can have one partner, while male dragons can have several females at once. Desterosa said that male demons are also not limited to one individual, and aristocratic demons can have several dozen females at once. Rui remembered Desterosa's words that if he finds a person with whom he wants to connect his life, then he must act. Rio told Desterosa that she was the type who was constantly jealous, after which Rio and Desterosa started having a small quarrel again. At first, Rui thought that he started communicating with Eudelia, only to find out something about the hero from her. However, after the duel and walk together, he became more and more attracted to her. Then Rui realized that Eudelia had become the very person whom he wanted to protect from danger and with whom he would live his whole life. After such thoughts, Rui decided to act, and he immediately kissed Eudelia. After a long kiss, Rui threw Eudelia onto the bed and began to take off her shirt. Rui decided not to stop at the shirt, and he decides to take off her underwear. At one point, Eudelia felt that they were rushing things too much and wanted to stop. Rui reassured Eudelia and promised her that tonight he would be as gentle as possible with her, which made her calm down a little. After that, Rui began to undress, and Eudelia was afraid that he simply would not fit in her. But Rui no longer listened to Eudelia, and he penetrated her, from which Eudelia experienced such unusual sensations for the first time. The next day, Rui and Eudelia were heading to the academy, and along the way, Eudelia kept complaining about unbearable pain. Rui suggested that she use her regeneration magic, to which Eudelia only pushed Rui and told him to think carefully about his behavior. Then Eudelia asked Rui to become her boyfriend and take full responsibility.